Today's episode is brought to you by Factor. Factor is going to get you those good meals. Also, today we're brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies are the undies that I have on me. Now let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Cox and Friend Dog. This is Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. Live, 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 live. Before our recording studio audience. Recording. Wake your ass up, it's the next Friday in the morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the episode of Cox and Crendo in the morning. Woo. Oh, whoa. Okay, hi. <laughs> I think the last couple I was too excited, so I tried to bring it down a bit. I think you brought it down too much. Now you're bringing me. Now you're bringing oh. me down. Uh, oh, now I'm down. Now I'm down. Whoa. Nope, it's too late. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if that was the show, just like, <laughs> hi, everyone, welcome to, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're so happy to be another, there, there will be one day. There will be one oh, day 100%. in the future. I don't know when it will be <laughs> when we're broken. <laughs> like, welcome back, everybody. I mean, I'm already broken. <laughs> <laughs> no, th- I'm talking mentally, not physically. Ah, uh, Okay. How's it going? Well, I'm not mentally or physically broken, although some may say otherwise, <laughs> but I don't feel that way. Well, uh, I'm good. doing great. Everything is everything's good. I've been trying to take it easy, trying to chill. We lucked out last night when we did our Nick Cage movie a thon because the first movie we picked, uh, while insane, was very serious. Yes. And uh, you know what? I was like, all right, that was fine. That was okay. But then. Nick Cage, Army of One, maybe my new favorite Nick Cage movie ever. <laughs> ever. It was, man. So yeah, the first movie we watched was Frozen Ground. It was a serious, real story, serial killer thing. Like, I didn't know, and I'm putting this out there to the world. If you weren't on the stream, I need to know. Is Anchorage, Alaska, is it all prostitution and like <laughs> physically abusive men? Because that is pretty much what the movie told me. Yeah, well, at least in the 80s. <laughs> right? Clearly things must have changed. Yeah. You're right. You're they right. Might have changed. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, crime, you know, a crime type story. 50 Cent was a strip club owner. No, he was a pimp. 50 Cent was a pimp. Oh, I thought he was the owner. No, he was a pimp. He just owned a bunch of the women. That, like, ah, again, okay. It was a whole. And then he had a friend who was a bouncer, and the bouncer was a bad guy, of course. Yeah. And then John Cusack was a serial killer. It, it it was a fine movie. It wasn't good by any means, but it was very serious and it wasn't played for laughs. And it was like, what a weird way to start our night. Yeah. So then we were like, what? Uh, we got to watch this other one, which was Army of One. Nick Cage plays a guy who decided to go kill Osama bin Laden by himself with a katana and a hang glider <laughs> in Pakistan. Already hilarious, just in description. Yeah. So that was that was a, a trip. Based on a true story. That was, a, yeah, another true story. Nick Cage acting his ass off in this film. It was the, like, most I think we've seen him act in a long time. I have never laughed so hard. The voice, the way he acted, the things he said, everything about Nick Cage's character was perfect. It was like, uh, it was so weird that we were constantly thinking like, well, this has to be fake. And then it wasn't fake. There was, so they say in the beginning of the movie that he needs to have dialysis on his kidneys or else he has hallucinations. Yeah. That's just like a thing. And so the entire movie, as he clearly is not taking dialysis, Crendo and I are like, all right, so he's, hallu- this is hallucination, right? Like this is the whole, the family that he's like in the, the woman he's in love with and the kid and the whole, it's all fake, right? He's it's no, nah, <laughs> no. And uh he just he gets the money from the doctor, which I don't know if that was real cuz they didn't say about anything about like the doctor giving him or whatever, but like straight up, he just goes to Pakistan and then, like roams around looking for Osama bin Laden. Like that actually happened. Yeah. And apparently he went multiple times, like 11 times or something to Pakistan to find Osama. Although sometimes he didn't make it. Like yeah. one time he went to go train to hang glide in Jerusalem and like fell off a bunch of cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, as you do. As you do, the, yeah. The real story is equally insane. When you go look it up, it's crazy. And the fact that the guy very much was like, if they ever make a movie about me, I want it to star Nick Cage. 
And then Nick Cage is the guy. It's amazing. And he said specifically because he looks like Nick Cage and Connor. <laughs> and he does. He does. It's not wrong. Yeah. It is. The only thing that was fake, I think, was the fact that Nick Cage put on a voice that was like, yeah, hey, everyone. But the guy doesn't sound like that. Yeah. Dude just sounds like a regular guy, but I guess Nick Cage was <laughs> ready to act his ass off because <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, so that was unbelievable movie. Fantastic. Great way to wrap it up and change the pace. Yeah, good times. See, that's yeah. the kind of week I've had. Just good times, great oldies, <laughs> living life. I discovered a bunch of um, music tracks online that are fake 80s. Uh, synth music that are you know it's like modern music but it's like some bands that do 80 synth i've been i've been vibing to that it's been great oh that sounds fun yeah they're throwing in you know i learned that i like synth music that throws in a saxophone every once in a while i'm like oh Whoop! yeah oh! is that like the yeah. uh is that like the mall music you know what i mean it's not muzak with a k no <laughs> it's you're in the city cars rolled down it, er, cars rolled down. Cars <laughs> rolled down. Cars rolled down. Windows, windows rolled down. <laughs> cars rolled down. Cars uh, rolled down. Yeah. You're in the city. Windows rolled down. Driving through in your car, and it's 1 a.m. and you're playing music that fits the vibe. You know what I mean? You're in the city. It's night, right? The only people around are like the crazy drunks and the people on the street yelling at each other. And it's like you got like this music in the background. It's like, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's great. It's great. I see. Well, that sounds fun. What's the what's the genre of it called then? Just eighties synth jazz? I don't know. What would you synth wave, maybe? Synth wave. I've heard of that. It's either synth wave, chill wave, or dance electronic. Dance electronic is very vague. Yeah, I feel like that's one of those you know like one of those charts when it's it shows like the various genus and species and things. Yeah. I feel like that's kinda like synth wave goes into chill wave and then it all is yeah. dance electronic. Yeah, <laughs> That's, that makes more sense. I don't know. I just, I feel it. Ooh, it's also called Future Synth. Future Synth. Sounds... I love Future Synth. That sounds <laughs> awesome. That's like something people in the 50s were like, those kids later, they'll be lis listening to Future Synth. <laughs> but oh, this, wow. this it, does, it does make sense. It says that um, it was inspired. What? This is crazy. Future Synth, a offshoot of Synth Wave. It's an electronic music genre, micro genre, <laughs> that has its influences drawn from uh, art and video games. What? Oh. The genre developed in the mid to late 2000s through French house producers, as well as young artists who were inspired by the 2002 video game Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Shut what? up. It's amazing. Uh, Synthwave reached wider popularity. And, uh, okay, future synth. In things like Drive, uh, Hotline Miami, Thor Ragnarok, and the Netflix series Stranger Things. Oh, I see. So it's that type of music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, except Stranger Things is mostly just cover versions of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like pull an 80s song and then like synthify it. Yeah. But yeah. Huh. I'm feeling it. It's good. It's good driving music is what it is. Like, <laughs> one week I'm like, yeah, I'm into yodeling, and now you're like, I'm in the future synth. <laughs> Who knows Look, what's next? We got, yeah, we have a cl eclectic speeches. <laughs> speeches? What? Sorry, what? what? So I just, I looked at this thing, and this is the problem. I, my mind runs a mile a minute, so <laughs> as I meant, we have eclectic tastes. Yeah. I was reading a thing about fash wave. This is absolutely true. This is This is not... All right. Popularity in spinoffs. Spinoffs to uh, Future Synth include, you ready for this? Yep. Future Synth is used, it says, again, in things like Tron Legacy, Drive, uh, Stranger Things, Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon, that kind of stuff, right? Right. But it says it branches off into other things, such as Gamer Synth, which is another one, and then things like Synthwave Influenced, such as Blinding Lights, which is the, the weekend song, right? Yeah. But then it says, one of the most interesting is in the 2010s, Fash Wave, which was <laughs> a combination of fascist and synth wave emerged in the largely industrial fusion genre and vapor wave <laughs> with political tracks and occasional sound bites 
that included fascist alt-right speeches. <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> Elsewhere, there was a growing trend of Russian synthwave musicians who espoused Soviet wave, which was nostalgia <laughs> for the Soviet Union. <laughs> Soviet I love music. Wave. It's insane. That's so... I can't believe that exists. Soviet... <laughs> Soviet wave. wave and fash wave. That's... A, like, that is so dark and totally messed up, but also hilarious. That is... That is not what I expected to ever hear or see from the... the I can't the believe that genre. is... Yeah, here we are. I didn't think I didn't think that's who we were get to. But you have to imagine if if synth wave and future synth is part of something like Blade Runner, and that movie is very dark and has this sort of like uh, oligarchy totalitarian vibe to it. That I guess you could easily translate that into Soviet wave <laughs> or some crazy dude. <laughs> wow. I the things you learn, the things you learn when you go on the internet. I did, would have never guessed that existed. So I'm glad I know that, I guess. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I don't know that I'm ever going to go online and look it up, but like, I'm glad I know. Who knows? You might be out at some place at some point in your life and they'll be like, this is for $10,000. And they ask you a question about Soviet wave and then you know it. Yeah, I'd be like, uh, actually, I do know something about Soviet wave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. don't like the idea that I'll be listening. I'll be like at a club somewhere, bopping my head along to some sort of like great beat and like this like synthesizer. Beep, boop, beep, da, boop, boop, right. And then just like a Hitler speech will start. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't want I don't want that to happen. I don't, I don't want to have to look around the room and be like, am I the only one weirded out by this? Or is this everyone OK with this? Like, what's the vibe here? I'd also be weirded out because you'd be in a club, and I don't think that would happen. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I think I've crossed over too old for clubs line. Yeah. Uh, the other day I was thinking about this. Like someone invited me out, just like, "Hey, you should come. To, you should come to this club. It'll be great." And I was like, "It might be great for you." I'm gonna get there and be like, "Yeah, yeah, all right, old guy in the club." <laughs> and then, of course, your friends always just like, "We're well, not old." It's like, uh. Relative to every other person in that club, <laughs> I am old. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like, you're going to put me in a club with a bunch of 19-year-olds, and I'm going to feel real fucking awkward. There's are like, as old as my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be true. It's very yeah. possible. That's weird. I, I never understood the club scene anyway. But I was also a World of Warcraft player. <laughs> I, like, get it. I understand the vibe of a club or like a great bar or a concert. Or, I get it. I understand. But I feel like they're definitely like most things in life is a cutoff for when it's cool to do that. And then your options are limited. So yeah, I could go to your cool Soviet wave dance club, <laughs> but I feel like I've aged up into the only concerts I can attend are Dave Matthews band. <laughs> that's where, that's where I'm at now. <laughs> I'm going to a fish tribute band. I mean, that, that is something you'd go to, right? <laughs> I mean, I would. I would go. I, I would. Yeah, I, I would. Um, yeah, it makes sense. You know, that's things. Obviously, as you get older, it's just weirder to, weirder to be there. But I feel like I wish still... it wasn't weird, though. Like, there's some things I want to do, but I very much know that I, like, it would be awkward. I don't want to be the guy who shows up. And it's like, I'm here for the party? Yeah, the guy that's still trying to, like, be a kid, essentially. I am consistently trying to be a kid, but uh, not in public. <laughs> I'll save yeah. it for the internet. Yeah, it's either that or, like, Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I mean, and you see what... It was It was fine for a while. He got away with it for a while because he's gorgeous and famous and rich. <laughs> but even gorgeous and famous and rich people, eventually, after a while, people are like, bro, you're old now. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go, dude. It's weird. And the fact that, you know, he's done it like five times. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like, the this first girl couple hit times, like 24. Time to move on to the next like 20 year old. The, the first couple times, Capri. everyone was like, oh, Leonardo. <laughs> and then after a while, yeah. That, again, if I were to like show up to a, a party of like synth, Soviet synth wave users, <laughs> right? 
uh, they'd be like, oh, it's crazy Jesse. He's at the party. Wow, what a fun guy. Is that what they'd say at the Soviet synth party? <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> there they'd he be is. Like, crazy Jesse is back Jesse again. Jesse has come to Soviet way party. <laughs> he loves his Soviet synth parties. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the rage. Yeah, and then, you know, the fifth time I show up, though, they're going to be like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> What are they doing? They might ask that the first time. (laughs) (laughs) But the fifth time, yeah, they'll they'll definitely ask it. They'll definitely, yeah, they may whisper it the first time. But the fifth time, a bouncer's going to stop me from going in. (laughs) Not allowed in here, comrade. Only Soviet wave only. I'm still Soviet wave. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think you are. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I I got a story. Okay, hit me. So, well, okay, I'll I'll start with the the runner-up from last week first. So, last week, remember you said my vagus nerve is damaged. Yes, and then you you said it got better. It did get better. So, it got better for like three days. I was pretty much feeling like back to normal. and uh, But I was still doing like gentle exercise. I was like, hey, I'm feeling pretty good. You know, I was walking, mainly just walking. And I was like, you know what? I bet I could do like some light five pound exercise. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, okay. Was a terrible idea. Bro. Why? <laughs> uh I don't know, because then I, after I did it, I felt my that area of my neck kind of tighten up and kind of tweak again. I was like, ah, oh, geez, I did it too early. I <laughs> did it too early, but it didn't feel too bad. Right? I was like, okay, you know what? It's just you know, I wasn't really, like, dizzy that bad, and, like, it went away later, and it was just kind of tight. And I was like, all right. Then I woke up the next day, and I could not look right. Well, I could look right, but only so far. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I was it like, hurt. oh, geez, there it is. I did it. So that was yesterday. Today, you know, pretty much the same. I, uh, I can look left. You know, I can still, like, move around, but, yeah, I can't look right very well. I can at least like what? sleep pretty well, but what? <laughs> I think it was just I think it was healing, and then I just went back too early and reaggravated it. That's what I'm saying. What were you thinking? I don't uh, know. Uh, <laughs> you knew you listen. were hurt. Yeah, but I felt better. <laughs> You're like that person when the doctor says, you know, don't walk on that leg for five to six weeks. And after three weeks, it feels better. So you're like, well, I guess I can walk on it. And then your entire hip shatters. You're that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that is me. As I'm also like the thing where my stomach would be irritated and then I'm like, oh, and I'd eat really healthy two weeks. And as soon as I got better, I'm like, dude, I could eat Chipotle again. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should have waited. So, yeah, that's but uh, I'm, you know, a little more hopeful now because I'm like, well, at least it healed. So I know it can heal and get hopeful. better. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds OK. I don't know if good's the right word, but I mean, it's not fun. I'd rather not have this, <laughs> but I at least know it can improve. So that's that's where I am. So I'm just like, all right, well, I guess I'll just take, like, I'm, I'm probably going to take a few weeks off of just, you know, any, when I did lower body exercises, I was good. So I'll probably stick to that and then walking for a while. You, yeah, you need to, I understand that. You are the workout man now. That's like your vibe. You love yeah. it. And if you miss a day, you lose your mind. But I must reiterate, yeah, you'll be forced to quit working out entirely if you really hurt yourself. Yeah. No, so uh, I get it. So I'm like, all right, you know, take it easy. And uh, that's, that's just the way it is. But this branches into another story. <laughs> well, of course it does. So the, the day before this happened i was walking because i felt good and i was like oh you know i'm just gonna keep walking he's walking he's always you know feeling great so i'm walking and i was like uh was like walking around this track right like in the gym and so there's like some other people can i ask you a question right is this track on the second floor yeah why is it because i know you go to a wellness center right right they Why is it every wellness the center? Floor. The track is on the second floor every time, <laughs> yeah, and without know. fail, every single one. I guess because, like, also you can like look down on people exercising and stuff. I guess so. It's like something to look at when you're walking. I don't know. Yeah, but. it's very bizarre. But you're, yeah. I just had to ask <laughs> yeah. because every single time. Yep. So I was walking, and I was like, "Oh, I gotta call." Uh, I had to like call my doctor appointment. I had, 
So I was like, I'll call the doctor's office and I gotta like ask him about something. So I did that. And I was like talking on the phone. And this woman kept like walking away from me. Like, uh, like she was like this 50, 60 year old woman. But like she would always be like, I want to say like 20 feet ahead of me. And then she would like cut across to like get ahead of me. But then I guess she was walking kind of slow. So I'd always catch up. Right. And then I was like, oh, I got to call this other person too. So I'm just like talking. I'm not like yelling. And then like I'm about to get off the phone with this other thing. And then she goes like, excuse me, do you work here? And I was like, no. And she's like, well, if you have phone calls, it would be great if you could like take them in the hallway. And I was like, what? And I was like, uh, why? And she was like, well, it's it could be really distracting for people walking around the track. And so I just thought, uh, you know, it's it's kind of rude. So I'd appreciate it if you just, you know, talked in the hallway. And I was like, uh, OK. So I was like, I was like so taken aback, like what? And I was just like, sure. And then I but I like was done talking at that point. And I was like, all right. And then that was that. And I was like so confused because then she like started to talk and she started talking to somebody else on the track. And I was like, well, what's the difference between me talking on the phone and you talking to somebody else on the track, right? Yeah, I, I don't think there is a difference. I feel like she was just inconvenienced by the fact that you were talking on the phone and she didn't like that. Yeah. Uh, and so she's, yeah, she wanted to say that to you while completely ignoring her own bad habits yeah 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 because like again i'm not i'm not a very loud person i'm not like oh excuse me i got an appointment <laughs> <laughs> like, I, that's not i'm just like oh hey like i was just talking like a normal voice but for some yeah. reason she just hey and like most people don't care it's like they're also like they have airpods in or like their their headphones in like most people aren't just walking around the track not listening to anything I would say that's a rarity. And on top of that, usually they're talking to somebody else. And then that's also loud. So that could be distracting. But I guess that's not distracting to her because that's a real life interaction. And then I guess it doesn't count if it's over the phone. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I, look, I agree with you that that is very stupid. Yeah. So I was like, I think that was a Karen interaction. Because at first I was like, oh, yeah, maybe that is the rule. And then I thought about it and I was like, no, that's stupid. Like, <laughs> I was like, this doesn't make any sense because like, you're just talking. Yeah, she was just inconvenienced in her own mind that like her day was ruined because she had to listen to your conversation. She didn't yeah. have to listen. She had to be a part of it. And yeah, she was just like, he's talking and I'm trying to walk here and I don't want up. Oh, but now I'm talking. So you must deal with my talking because I'm the main character. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a it's a narcissist thing. So she was definitely a narcissist Karen lady. Uh, you know, if you saw her, you'd be like, "Oh, that's a Karen lady, right?" Um, in fact, she did kind of look like a Karen, like straight, like not even just like the the meta, like a it looked like her name was Karen. Look, you don't have to convince me of this. I fundamentally believe <laughs> she had the haircut. Yeah. She had like the outfit. Yeah. No. Uh, anyone who gets upset about someone talking on the phone, well, you're just like near them. Yeah. It doesn't like it, it's all right. It's just a phone call. Like it's yeah. fine. If anything, you use that to tell a story later cuz not here's the thing, 90% of the time people on phone calls are just like, "So I said, 1 million dollars, you better make it two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that guy, you take all that information, you store it in your brain, you go home and tell your friends what a giant piece of shit you saw today. Yeah. No, that, that was pretty much my my thought process. I was like, "Well, I got a story now. So I mean, I'll take it." And I finished yeah. my phone calls, so I didn't have to talk to anybody anymore anyway. So you know what? I could I was done annoying her, so I was going <laughs> to stop anyway. There's, there's something weird about people getting upset over minor annoyances or inconveniences. Yeah. And it's always amusing to me because I feel like they feel like they have to draw a line or people are going to walk all over them. And it's like, no, no, the barista that's on their phone... They got some shit to handle real quick. Let them do it. Like yeah. you're still gonna get your coffee. You're, uh, but they're supposed to serve me. It'll be faster if you let them do their thing and instead of you yelling at them and getting a confrontation with them. And now no one's gonna get the damn coffee. We have to sit here and let you argue. Yeah. Right? It's like it's about the principle. Like no, <laughs> no, it's not. Just 
<laughs> you just wanted to be heard because you feel like no one listens to you and you get no respect. And you are putting all the years of not respect that you've received onto that barista. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. Like, no, no, just stop. Clearly she's the woman at the track probably had to listen to a bunch of that crap. Or she has people in her life who like talk on the phone and said that kind of thing. Yeah. And so she took it out on you because that's what people do. And it's nonsense. Yeah. And listen, I don't care. I'm like, <laughs> I'm the type of person where like, I, I like bring the the escalation levels down to like a two. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I, there was one time, I don't even remember if I brought the story up. We were in the, the parking lot of this like grocery store place. And there's this woman was like out there and she like parked near me, but I parked in between the lines of the parking spot. And so she parked so badly that her car was like close to mine and she couldn't like open her passenger door side all the way. But that's your fault because you parked terribly, right? Like I'm between the lines. I parked perfectly normal. I parked within the rules of the parking space. But then she was like, why did you park so close to my car? And I was like, I parked between the lines. And she was like, she was like, yeah, well, I can't get out. I'm a, I'm a, she said, and I quote, I'm a big woman. She was like, I'm a big woman. I can't open my car that way. And I was like, I mean, I parked between the lines in the parking space. And then she would like keep saying things. And I would literally just keep pointing and saying, I parked between the lines in the parking space. Like you can't argue that because it's true. Yeah. And then after like the fifth time, she was just like, whatever. And then she got in and drove off. Like, I'm a big boy. I'm not out there fighting people if they park too close to my car. If they hit my car, that's a different story. Yeah. But if they park too close, then it is on me as the fat one to be like, all right, well, I got to reevaluate where my park is. Do I angle differently? Do I park further away from people? Do I maybe I have to walk a little further if I don't? Like, there's you got to think about things besides just like other people need to accommodate me. Yeah. Like, that's a messed up way of thinking. Plus, like, how am I supposed to know anything about her? Right, exactly. <laughs> You're ever it is a weird mindset that I think a lot of people get into in all aspects of life where they think that other people give a damn about them. Yeah. You know, when like, oh, I tripped and I fell, and now everyone's looking at me. Trust me, they looked at you for two seconds and now no one cares again. Like there is <laughs> nobody cares about anything going on in your life. Yeah. It's just a fact. Or most people see that and they're like, I don't want to get involved in that. <laughs> Yeah, like, and so all the problems that you have that you're going through, no one's thinking about that. They got their own problems they're thinking about. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, you can't expect everyone to change their life for you. You got to change and mess with your own crap. Yeah. Like, if you're walking around a track and you trip and fall and you go like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Nobody cares. She's probably the person behind you is probably mad that I'm talking on the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't care about you falling. <laughs> <laughs> this is outrageous outrageous yeah so i was like this will be a good cox and crendor story and it was but overall you know my vagus nerve isn't damaged so that's good there is a, i was gonna say there was people commenting like oh yeah my vagus nerve is damaged and they have like uh what do you call it like things put in to like stimulate the vagus nerve so they don't have like seizures Whoa. And like heart Whoa. things. So it's like an actual thing. <laughs> I had no clue. Yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah. Someone said, I actually have an implant called a vagus nerve stimulator. It helps control seizures by sending a small electrical shock to the cluster. The vagus nerve impacts a whole lot of things. It's really weird. So, yeah. Who knew? Yeah, yeah we learned a lot. Uh, here's the thing we need. We need, where are those comments about... People living abroad who listen to Cox and Crendor. That's the question. Yeah. That is the I wanna question. I want to know about those. I want to know what happened there because I got a lot of questions for y'all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm done. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't know that I have a segue for this. Well, <laughs> uh, you know what else you can listen to? These ads. <laughs> uh? Sure. Uh? <laughs> it works pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yeah like factor hey this year i know you've got goals i know you're trying to set up for the next nine or so months and change your change your routine change it up everyone's trying to do that even if you say you're not i know deep down 
You really are. You're like, bro, I got to I got to fix my Vegas nerve. I'm a mess. Well, one of the things you can do to fix up your routine is eat better. And Factor is here to help you do that with fast, ready-to-eat, nutritious meals delivered straight to your door, leaving you with time and energy to tackle all the things you got to do on your Get Better in 2023 to-do list. Achieve and maintain your 2023 goals with Factor. Get America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and start saving time, eating well, and living your best year yet. If you're too busy to cook, Factor's right for you. You can get a meal out of the fridge, into the microwave, two minutes, heat it up, enjoy it. No matter what your lifestyle is, they got you covered. Keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie options, protein plus, all sorts of things prepared by chefs and approved dietitians. Each meal has all the ingredients you need to stay satisfied all day long. Factor is here to help you enjoy clean, easy eating without all the hassle. Simply choose your meals online. And then they'll deliver you a package to your tour, ready in two minutes, like I said, super easy. I know right now, for example, they've got like a queso fondito, if that's your vibe, or Indian butter chicken, buffalo chicken breast. They always have chicken piccata and a sun-dried chicken thing. They always, like, there's some that are staples that are always there, but every once in a while they, they like to switch it up and it's, oh, so good. They have a, uh, like a jalapeno popper burger. They got all sorts oh, of stuff. Yeah. But because... You can get it in like keto version. It doesn't have buns or all that. So it's, you know, all that stuff's there for you. Delicious. Right now, if you want, please, by all means, go to factormeals.com slash cox50 and use code cox50, cox50, C-O-X, to get 50% off your first box. That's code cox50 at factormeals.com slash cox50 to get 50% off your first box. Box. Also today we're brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies are the undies that I have on me right now. This year we're saying goodbye to all the things that don't bring us joy, the one-sided relationships, the overpriced juices, to that scratchy, bunchy underwear, and instead we're saying hello to comfort, baby, feeling our best. And that starts with the thing right next to our junk, our <laughs> underwear. Like a 90s rom-com makeover scene, MeUndies is here to spruce up your collection. And now you can get 25% off your first order as well as free standard shipping. MeUndies is great. Crendor and I have used it forever. Every single person we recommend it to is like, oh my God. And they are correct because it's great. I uh, just ordered because I'm a, I'm a crazy person. I'm planning <laughs> for my trip out of the country. I'm like, all right, so I'm going to need some new underwear. And I have a bunch of new MeUndies. I have, like, uh, some cool-looking red ones. I got ones that have skeletons on them. I got ones that says send nudes on it. Uh, I have one that has UFOs. Uh, one that has hearts. I'm wearing... One that uh, has XOXOs. I'm wearing Yetis with pine trees. I'm wearing one that has, uh, like, a cacti on it. Like, cactus in love. Oh, I got, so, I got that go. one. Yeah, see? Yeah. Big fan. They're so comfortable, and they fit so well. That's because they have sizes extra small to 4XL. So they got something for everyone and everybody. Once you fall in love with their super cozy products, you can then, you know, if you want, sign up and get a membership. Get them shipped to your door monthly. Membership's free to join, and each month, you'll choose a new pair of undies, socks, or bralette. Plus, you get exclusive first looks at deals and products with the ability to save up to 30% on all their snuggly stuff. And they have a lot of different things besides just undies. So right now, go to MeUndies.com slash Crendor. That's me. To get 25% off your first order and free standard shipping. Again, that's MeUndies.com slash Crendor. That's me. Okay, let's go to Trump Jones. This guy's a credit card. Let's try the other. Thing. Oh boy, traffic is crazy. There was rain, there was snow, there's thunderstorms, there's normal storms, there's uh, there's everything. There's heat, right? Down in the southwest, it looks like. It's just the weather all over. And when, with weather comes traffic. And so, uh, uh, spring break also coming up. So, you know, that's going to be backed up on the beaches. You know, watch out, those teenagers all over. Uh, if you're trying to go somewhere to a beach to relax, you know, you might show up at Spring Break Beach. 
and uh, they might be playing Soviet Wave. You don't know <laughs> what the kids are listening to. Uh, back to you. Thanks, Crendor. Now let's go to weather. Weather. I thought I was in church for a minute. What the hell? <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry. All right. <laughs> so, uh, we got a weather quest for, uh, oh God, I saw it. I lost it. Here it is. Uh, Milton Keynes in the UK. Not only is it the home of Bletchley Park, which was the home of the code breakers in World War II, but it's also where the Red Bull F1 team is based. It was the home of the UK's first multiplex cinema. The Point, and has over 5,000 acres of woodland, parks, and rivers. Fun fact, Oliver Cromwell's son died of smallpox in Newport, Pagnell. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Fun, fun fact. <laughs> fun facts. <laughs> fun fact. Great fun fact. Mm -hmm. um, Alright, here we go. Milton Keynes, England, United Kingdom. 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, feels like 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Humidity 90%. Tre the pressure is 29.83 inches. Visibility 6 miles. Uh, yeah, your winds at 4 miles an hour. Your sunrise 6.38 a.m. Sunset 5.51 p.m. Dew point 30. UV index 0. And a moon phase of waxing gibbous. Waxing. Uh, <laughs> check it out the 10 day. We've got 47 with rain. Tuesday, 41 with some AM snow. Wednesday, 41 with rain, snow. Thursday, 44, rain, snow. Friday, 48, rain. Saturday, 50, rain. Sunday, 51, light rain. Monday, 52, light rain. Tuesday, 47, rain. And uh, it's it's really just rain every day. That sucks. My <laughs> bad, but I've been there. So, like, whatevs. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I'd probably go crazy if it was every day. Yes. Yeah, but, but I just came from six days of rain nonstop. So, <laughs> I mean, like, I, I have no sympathy. I've been, I've been through <laughs> it, man. I got zero sympathy. Yeah. Yo, they got a restaurant called Old Beams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like O L, like B E A M like E -M? -E A M S. Old Beams, and it's like a, it's like a barn looking. Yo, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, it actually does look pretty good. Visually stunning. Yeah. But what does the food look like? That's the key. Uh, it looks it looks pretty good from what it I've looks seen. Looks all right. The charcuterie yeah. board looks pretty. Good. I don't know what the hell that thing is. Yeah, they got some fancy. Uh, they got some fancy glasses for the drinks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Hey, yeah. not bad. Yeah, not you bad. Can invite your furry friends. <laughs> Oh, see, whatever the hell this thing is, they're like a uh, English Sunday breakfast thing, Sunday dinner, whatever that is. Oh, yeah. That thing looks delicious. Oh, it does. Everything else is like, all right, but yeah, yeah, you can see there's some things here that are like the standouts. Like, oh, you got to be eating that one. Oh, yeah. Although the chips look good as hell. Yeah. I'm a big fan of like big old honking chips. They have halloumi fries. Get out. I got to stop looking at this. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, what else? <laughs> we got to move on. We got to go to sports. We got to go to physical activity. <laughs> Hold on, but I clicked on the snow zone. <laughs> Son of a it's a literal like ski. It's like one of those indoor ski things. Look at it. You see the snow zone? I don't see the snow zone. Send me a link. How do I see the snow zone? Hold on, here you go. Look at the snow zone. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you got to look at the snow zone. You got to look at the snow zone. Oh, it's an indoor ski. You know what? Yeah. The only ever time I've seen one of these was, I think, in, like, Dubai or something. I would imagine there's in places that are hot. <laughs> it's yeah. It's like an indoor right. snow thing. So otherwise, people just go outside. Uh, yeah, the snow zone. That's pretty neat. So how, how far do you think this is from London? Uh, if you zoom out. Oh, it's like. It's, like, close. But close. I don't know. How far that actually is. Like an hour outside, maybe? Let's find out. <laughs> London. It is driving one hour, 11 minutes. Yeah, all right. So yeah, that's not, not too bad. bad. Not too 
I bet on a train it's like 35 minutes. Yeah, probably. That's that's not bad at all. Yo, yeah, what? It's like the... halfway between London and the place where Peaky Blinders is. Hold on, look at this one. This is the last one. There's a the Chester. Oh, I love a good arms. Yeah. The Chester Arms, I'd, I'd have a field day there. I'd be so happy. Yeah, that looks great. It's probably, here's the question. Is it is it owned by an inter, like an international conglomerate, or is this its own thing? I mean, this looks like it's just somebody's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'll if you look hard enough, a lot of the, like, the Queen's Tush, all of the, <laughs> like, the, the pubs that you think are dope-ass, like right. little tiny pubs, if you look... You'll see a plaque or something somewhere that says, part of the international chain of Johnson Foods. Ah, uh, okay, I see. It's and that queen. happens a lot. And I, yeah, I was scolded by a bunch of Brits because they were like, it's not a real place, golf. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Although this place looks legit. It the does more look I scroll through legit. the food, all of it looks really good. Yeah. Like if this is owned by the queen, this is like one of her fine establishments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's this really solid. is. Although, yeah. one of the dishes is, I don't know how far down this is, so I'll just send you a link, but one All of the right. dishes is like, let's take everything delicious, but also throw on ugly ass wet ham. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is this meal? <laughs> what the? This, this meal is like a plate of all the meats, and then the grossest, wettest ham I've ever it's seen. It's like bologna. <laughs> <laughs> it's like straight up bologna. I have no idea what this dish is called, but it is unappetizing. Yeah, that is. Everything everything else on here looked so good, and then that one gross-ass piece of ham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's like straight-up lunch meat. Uh, it's awful looking. Yeah. Everything else, I'm like, wow, that looks so good. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's like yeah the... that one thing. <laughs> there's, uh, there's always got to be one that's like, oh, dear. Yeah, there's, all, there's always one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's the weather. <laughs> All right, let's go to sports. Sports. Uh, sports. We've got sports occurring. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I hear uh, that. Over in the NBA standings, Bucks at the top, Celtics right behind them, 76ers, Cavaliers, Knicks, and Nets uh, on the top six, then Heat, Hawks, Raptors, Wizards. Over in the Western Conference, you got the Nuggets, Grizzlies, Kings, Suns, Warriors, Timberwolves, followed by the Mavericks, Clippers, Pelicans, Jazz. Uh, then you got the NHL, where we've got the Bruins at the top, uh, the Hurricane, the Dallas Stars, and the Vegas Golden Knights. The Bruins, 103 points. I think is they're Ooh. on pace to be one of the fastest Ooh. teams to the most points in the NHL. Like they're they're 49 wins and eight losses. Which is actually pretty insane. That is pretty insane. Yeah. So, uh, they, they look like the team to, to beat this year. But as I always see every year, there's always some team like, damn, they had the best regular season ever. And then they like lose in round one. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> yeah. that's playoffs. Mm. Uh, and then over in baseball, spring training has been happening. Uh, I actually tuned in for some, and it's been uh, still pretty fun to watch. I think we mentioned it last time. They got, like the pitch clock and everything now. It's great. You know what? Since you mentioned it, mm -hmm. that is all I've seen on TV. Really? Every single time someone's like, hey, I got some big news coming from baseball, and then it's just exactly what we've talked about. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. We're ahead of the curve, man. Yeah. Every time. We're trendsetters. This show, trendsetters. Trendsetters. Uh, and that's sports. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What is our fact of the day? Fact of the day, day, day. Um, buttermilk does not contain any butter. Is it because this is what I've always thought? It, it's it's milk that is churned the same way butter is, but not butterified. Is that it? Um, it says the butter in its name refers to the origins of the drink. Now that's a confusing random fact you probably didn't know. Well, what does that mean? Yeah, what that's is that helpful? Mean? The origins of the drink. Buttermilk origins. Began. <laughs> Buttermilk origins sounds like the name of a video game. <laughs> it does. Buttermilk origins. <laughs> uh, 
Buttermilk gets its name because it was originally the milk that was left over after butter was made. In this unpasteurized milk, naturally occurring bacteria fermented some of the milk sugars and gave buttermilk its trademark slightly sour taste. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Yeah, there we go. Why didn't yeah, they that, just put that, that on out. this website? They're just like, Good it's question. the origin. Well, like, tell me. That's why I'm here, <laughs> to learn facts. We're here to tell you a fact, not explain it, okay? <laughs> um... So yeah, and then I'll throw in a bonus fact here, which is Minnie Mouse's first name is not Minnie. Uh, okay. It is Minerva. Stop. Is Min it Minerva Mouse? <laughs> Minerva Mouse. Minnie Mouse is a nickname that was given to the character by UB Iwerks and Walt Disney. Minnie's actually name is rarely used. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, we're going to find out that Mickey's name is like Michelangelo Donavito <laughs> Aloysius Mouse. <laughs> yeah, if you like, yeah, like oh, Minerva Mouse. I want to see. Yeah, look at that. Even though Wikipedia doesn't do it. It's just straight up like Minnie Mouse. But yeah, then it mentions Minerva in the Wikipedia thing. Do you think it was Disneyified where like someone came along and was like, silence it. No one must know. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. Wait, but then it, this says there's a Minerva Mink. Yes, Minerva Mink is from, uh, 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 not Tiny Toons, um, maybe Tiny Toons, or Animaniacs. It's one of the two. Oh, yes. yeah, Animaniacs. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where I, I was like, that. I've heard that name before. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to over-sexualized minks when I was 13. <laughs> You know, it does appear that way. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I remember. <laughs> that and hello, nurse, I remember. Uh, yeah, looking at some of these, it's like, <laughs> this was on television. Yeah. Uh, it was over-sexualized. Like, a lot of sexualized. Yeah, like this one is, she's got her mink foot up. That's definitely banned on Twitch television. 100 <laughs> percent cartoon for kids yep um those are facts of the day all right <laughs> oh my goodness what is our big news story a uh, big news story of the day oh we lost him. He, he teleported <laughs> away. Oh, 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 gone. Teleport. <laughs> Here we go. Mexican president posts photo of what he claims is an elf. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador posted a photo on his social media account showing what he said appeared to be an Alux, a mischievous woodland spirit in Mayan folklore. Mexico's president posted a photo on his social media accounts showing what appeared to be a woodland spirit similar to an elf. Uh, he did not seem to be joking when he posted the photo. Uh, Lopez Obrador wrote the photo, quote, was taken three days ago by an engineer. It appears to be an alux, adding everything is mystical. The nighttime photo shows a tree with a branch forming what looks like a halo of hair and what may be stars forming the figure's eyes. Lopez Obrador has long expressed reverence for indigenous cultures and beliefs. Uh, engineers and workers are in the Yucatan Peninsula constructing a tourist train that is the president's pet project. According to traditional Mayan belief, aluxes are small mischievous creatures that inhabit a forest and fields and are prone to playing tricks on people, like hiding things. Some people leave small offerings to appease them. The ancient Mayan civilization reaches height from 300 AD to 900 AD on the Yucatan Peninsula and in adjacent parts of Central America, but the Mayas' descendants continue to live on the peninsula. Many continue speaking the Mayan language and wearing traditional clothing, while also conserve conserving traditional foods, crops, religious, and medicine practices, uh, despite the conquest of the region by the Spanish between 1527 and 1546. The best part about this is the tweet still exists, yeah. right? It is him. It is his account. It is 
a tweet from him. And what's even crazier is that I discovered just now that you know how there's like yellow check marks on Twitter and then the old blue yeah. check marks? If it, you're a governmental official, apparently you have a gray check mark. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, Andres Manuel has a gray check. I didn't know that. Anyway, <laughs> the tweet is still there. Yeah. And when you click on the tweet, you can see this thing that definitely looks like some type of monster that would stalk you in a video game for sure. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I am very fascinated about the train they're building. I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, having been to Yucatan and, and gone to Chichen Itza and stuff, like I would love to go back and check stuff out again one day. But And a train would be great. But with all that said, <laughs> for all the crap that Twitter has on it, every once in a while, Twitter actually comes through. And all the comments are like, <laughs> cool, great post, dude. However. The image that you're posting of this elf is at least two years old, and apparently, according to this one tweet, was around, uh, this guy says, the photo that you said was taken three days ago has been doing the rounds in Nuevo Leon since February 2021, and in Thailand since December of that year. <laughs> and everyone's just like, yeah, this is actually an old photo, bro. Yeah, but it's an old photo of what? That, see, now that's <laughs> that, that's a question. Yeah. What is it a photo of? Good question. No clue. It but kinda... it is not it is not Mexican in origin at all. Oh yeah, no. That that is definitely something he just found on the internet and was like, well, this is insane. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of no. looks like a demon monkey with uh like an Assassin's Creed hood. Yeah, or it has a light aura behind its head, which makes it, like, look like a face. It is one of those pictures that is probably 99% our brain trying to interpret what it actually is. Yeah. And it's probably just an owl. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's probably actually you can nothing. See, you can see sort of, like, a pixelated what could be a leg behind the tree, like it's crouched and it's, like, standing on the tree or something. Yeah. But also... That could be an artifact, that could be a branch, that could be... Le it could be a million other things besides part of a leg. Yeah. Uh, plus, like, he says it's the, like, a lux, which they look, according to what I've Googled, <laughs> look like tiny troll elves. And this doesn't really look like a troll elf. Yeah, I'm looking at the picture he posted. It looks nothing like what it's supposed to look like. However, I think we should all be talking about the fact that in the picture he posted... Several hundred years ago, the Mayans knew of gonk droids. <laughs> That's just a gonk droid, bro. That look at he's got the little feet. He's got the yeah. trash can body. <laughs> they knew Star Wars before Star Wars. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't even I didn't even realize that. Look that guy's that. way cooler than the elf. Look at that gonk droid. And what is there's like is the gonk droid thing like grabbing the elf, or is that someone I don't else's name? Oh, there is, like, a hand behind him grabbing his hair. Yeah. yeah. Like, he caught him, and he's like, you go in the trash. <laughs> you go in the <laughs> robot trash. <laughs> yeah. The Mayan I robot like trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. See, we made up our own better mythology. Plus. That'll teach, that'll teach them to have thousands of years of history. <laughs> I mean, you know, the Mayan robots are actually a thing, right? And yes. so <laughs> I mean, we learned that. <laughs> we learned that. And so people thought 2012 was the end of the world. But I think when the Mayan trash robots come back, that's the end of the world. Right. No yeah. doubt. <laughs> that's the real 2012. Yeah. <laughs> they just start putting everybody into the trash. Yeah, they're like, time to take out the garbage. <laughs> yeah. And then they clean up the streets. Yeah. And we're all thrown away. And they're like, the return of the Mayans. Yeah. And honestly, it's probably not a bad arc. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We had a good run, everyone. Yeah. We had a good run. <laughs> we had a good run. <laughs> oh, well, speaking of good runs, that's it for this episode. Eh? Ah. Eh? Ah. Thank you all for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. But, Crendor, hit them with the socials. We've got socials. We got youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast. All one word. Click the bell to be notified when these go up. Uh, so comment, subscribe. Like, tell us your opinions on anything we asked for your opinion on. <laughs> Give us weather. Uh, also, youtube.com slash Cox and Crandor. 
Check out all the animations over there, do the same thing, except for the commenting about weather. Uh, and then check out us on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, if you don't want to be on YouTube. Also, we are on platforms ourselves. We're on YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox, YouTube.com slash Crendor, Twitch TV Jesse Cox, Twitch TV Crendor, Twitter Jesse Cox, Twitter Crendor, TikTok Jesse Cox, TikTok, TikTok Crendor, uh, Instagram Notorious Cox, Instagram Crendor is taken, uh, Patreon Jesse Cox, Patreon Crendor, YouTube.com slash Cren Clips, uh, YouTube.com slash Cox Clips, YouTube.com slash Warhammer Crendor, and Crenslot.com, get my merch. <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh my goodness. Well, that is it. Thanks so much. And as always, eh. so be continue.